kindly tell us how you are and uh, you can also give us uh, uh, the things that stood out for you in the previous uh, in the previous uh, session about uh, the HP framework. Yeah, and then uh, we will proceed. Can start with Fred. Fred, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, hi, everyone, and uh, thanks for being on time. I I certainly look forward to today's. I I enjoyed I enjoyed uh, last Saturday's uh, sharing uh, by Brother uh, John 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 Nganga. Um, uh, you remember we had uh, looked at. Um, uh, the, the the vision having um, I mean having the potential one assessing the potential and that is the vision for the for the future and I think that um, exercise of visualizing one's 80th birthday I think is quite um, uh, a phenomenal way of doing it I found it very interesting in other words getting the you are significant people you know just telling you. Uh, um, what, how they see how they see one. Uh, I think to me that was uh, a major a major takeaway from uh, last Saturday's uh, lesson. Uh, can have uh, somebody else. And if may honor Cecilia. Cecilia has joined. Cecilia, welcome as. Uh, as you tell us how you've been and how uh, what stood out for you in the previous in the eight piece session in the previous sessions of eight piece, my week has been good. I thank God. Mm -hmm. uh, what stood out uh, for me last week yes. was uh, what, 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 I don't. I was that um, there was a statement he said that uh, you when you invest on others you are multiplying yourself, so it's good to invest on others because uh, out of that is when you'll be able there there will be a multiplication of that, so that one really stood out for me. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and uh, lastly we can have. Uh... We can have uh, Tony. We can have Tony as uh, you also pray for for the speaker as uh, he comes oh. to join us as he starts us off the next one minute. Tony, Tony, please. Okay, thank you for for that. Uh, I've been well. Uh, for me, the eight P's in general were very instrumental i endeavor to i commit to be using them uh for me uh i will i'll change tact and not comment per se on the eight p's but comment on the on the declaration that uh, brother john ganga told us or rather gave us that the, in the mentorship relationship the mentee is the one who sorts, sort of drives the, the relationship. So in, uh, in such is to say that uh, you're not supposed to sort of be directive, but uh, be one, an advisor of sorts. That to me still, uh, uh, still touches a chord because uh, it goes to show that there's need also for prayer. Because <laughs> at times... Uh, you know, you as a human being, you may tend to try and uh, in your in pouring of yourself to someone, uh, be pushy, but it only takes the hand of God for them to for for God to to touch their heart so that they can agree to what you're telling them and see the benefit of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let us uh, believe and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for this day, Abba Father. We do not take it for granted that you enabled each and every one of us to gather together at this uh, class of
King of Glory. We do not take it for granted, Abba Father, that even you enabled Elnet as an organization to be there for time for such a time as this, O King of Glory, to impart knowledge, wisdom, and to us, O King of Glory. We pray, Abba Father, for even the facilitator of the day, Dr. Tim Kirohi, O King of Glory. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, O King of Glory, you may enable him, Abba Father, to impart to us, O King of Glory, that which you have poured into his heart, O King of Glory, for even such a time as this, Abba Father. I pray for each and every um, mentee who is also a mentor, O King of Glory, in the making or even uh, in in continuity, O King of Glory, that they may be able to open their hearts, O King of Glory, to receive receive that which uh, the speaker of the day or, or the, uh, and the facilitator of the day has for us, O King of Glory. I pray, Abba Father, that uh, you will be with us, uh, your presence will be with us. We pray that we will not have any technological mishaps, O King of Glory, and at the end of it all, we shall remember to thank you. For we pray all this trusting and believing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Uh, Karaoke, Karaoke, you can uh, introduce to us uh, the speaker as uh, he takes on. Okay, thank you, Ivan, for the good job. I appreciate you also for you have been a good MC the last few sessions. Uh, I want also to thank everyone who is attending today, and I want to believe that others will be joining. Uh, it has been great to see you turning up every Saturday. And uh, remember that I requested today we have a brief meeting towards the end to discuss the way forward. So when Dr. Tim finishes his talk, we can proceed for another maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So uh, it is my joy and pleasure to introduce Dr. Tim Kirohe, who, whom I have known for a, a few years now, maybe I think this is the sixth year since we got to know each other and I was introduced to him by a friend and he became our mentor. And uh, it has been a great journey. I never knew it would go this far. <laughs> up to today, I look up to him as my mentor and also as a friend. Uh, he is the one who introduced me to Elnet. He started mentoring us with my friend when we were in campus uh, for the year. That is 2014 and 2015. Then after that, he told me about life ministry and about Elnet. And I got interested and I joined. Yeah, and I have been in Elnet, though in and out of Elnet, but uh, I, I really appreciate his mentorship. Uh, maybe if I had not met him, I would have taken a different direction, which, is, which may not be very good uh, because I was really deep into politics. And I don't know how ready I was, even as a Christian, but I believe right now I have grown quite a bit from that time. And if I was to go back, maybe I would go back as a different person, maybe as a person who would have more impact. So I can say Dr. Dean is somebody who has really impacted me. Yes, the founding uh, director of Elnet, and he has been in life ministry for many years. And currently, he is the vice chancellor of International Leadership University. He could tell us something about that. Uh, yeah, I invited him on a very short notice, but he agreed. So I am also very grateful for that. So without saying much more, there is so much I could say. Allow me to invite Dr. Tim Kirohi to proceed. Uh Thank you very much, uh, Karaoke, and uh, good evening, everyone. Oh, you, you are muted, I'm aware, so it's all right. I understand <laughs> you are muted <laughs> of necessity. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's nice to be able to connect. Um, when Karaoke mentioned about this, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to say no. 
Uh, so, you know, when it, when he talks about that relationship and uh, having, in a sense, uh, invited him to Elnet, which uh, he is now giving leadership, of course, there is no way I would, I would not be here. <laughs> so I was, I was able to make some adjustments to my schedule and, uh, and I'm glad we can have this time together. I want to thank each one of you for your interest uh, in this area of mentorship or mentoring others. I'm sure we'll get to hear a bit more about some of your own motivation, your vision for it, as well as maybe any struggles that you may be having. I'll try to make this as interactive as we can um, if, as I share uh, my journey, my story in this uh, process. Um, I, I grew up uh, you know, with Christian parents, so I, I credit my parents. My mother is late now, but uh, was a godly woman, and then my father. And uh, they are the ones who, you know, since brought me to faith, um, although I, I, I didn't really quite do that until I went to high school That's many years ago. <laughs> and um, I got to um, grow some, you know, and so on. But uh, it is not until I came to campus. Uh, so for those of you who have been in university recently or maybe still or have been, I found that really to be a very critical part of my life in terms of growing and establishing, uh, becoming clear on my values and so on. Uh, and it was a process of discipleship, which you could use as another word for mentoring, that I think helped me to clarify that. So my background training is in engineering at the University of Nairobi. But uh, while I was there, it uh, became clear to me that God had a different uh, mission for my life. And that was definitely not as easy. Those who are easy days in this country to get jobs, believe it or not, they would come for us at the university to ask us whether they would like to work. We know there was nothing like tamaking. That's a that's new language <laughs> that has come recently or uh, job seeking and all of that. Um, you know, but uh, the Lord uh, definitely made it clear. I struggled a bit, but uh, eventually I was able to make the decision. I wasn't easy. Um, my lecturer struggled with it because I, I was one of those who had been doing well. So they would come and uh, ask for the top three students or something, and I would kind of been on the list. So I had all these job offers with good companies. Uh, but I remember walking through Great Court after that decision. And now those of you familiar with the University of Nairobi, that's the old uh, court in that, uh, no, at, the, at the main university. And uh, just feeling a weight off my shoulders because I felt finally I had made the decision. I had struggled with it, but I had made the right decision. Um, true i mean i knew my family may not fully understand even my christian parents struggled a little bit <laughs> because it was not something that well, they had never known anybody else who would take that kind of decision uh certainly some of my relatives were they were a lot more expressive you know and so on even with my parents we took like three days talking about that with my relatives you know i had to be taunted quite a bit <laughs> and of course yeah some of the friends too uh but um uh, I had come to the place where, I, by the grace of God, I had become clear that pursuing a purpose, pursuing uh, one's calling was more important than anything else. Of course, I would not have imagined, I mean, what has ended up being my life now. I didn't know Nairobi very well. I grew up in the village, but I knew, and I say this with utmost respect, uh, in case, you know, that's where you grew up or you know, have a connection. I knew a little bit about Kibera, you know, uh, because I had some people, friends who lived in golf course. And those days there was not even a wall, so you could actually see, you know, go Chini, Gatina, and so on. And I actually thought maybe following Jesus, you know, and uh, his calling for my life would uh, mean <laughs> a life uh, there, you know. So I gave up the right to be married, and I didn't really think I would amount to him very much, but I, I had come to the place where I knew, you know, that was words of David Livingstone. But, uh, you are safer in the fiery furnace if that's where the Lord wants you to be than anywhere else out of, out of will, you know, outside of his will. You remember the case of uh, the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that although they were in the fire, so to speak, they were, they were safer there, you know, and so on. And of course, Daniel himself in the lion's den. So when you're in the will of God, it doesn't matter the circumstances. Uh, he'll take care of the details. He'll take care of the other externals and so on. You know, so I'm thankful for that. And... Uh, uh, the help to kind of get through that. But God began to surprise me. Uh, soon afterwards, I began to see um, 
you know, I think one of the first surprises was even before I could finish university because uh, I had made that decision like in my last trimester of, of, or semester of uh, university. Um, I was asked to get a passport. You know, those days were not easy to get. They were almost a, pre you know, a precious document with very, very few people. You had to get, you know, this clearance from, um, you know, the, the central bank to even get any foreign exchange. You couldn't just go and there were no forex bureaus, you know, and so on. And so anyway, um, and I was going to go to a mission trip to, to the Philippines. So actually I was the first uh, person in my class uh, to fly an aeroplane, you know, or in an aeroplane, not myself flying it, but in it. <laughs> and, um, you know, here was, uh, I mean, I, I, I did not even think I would ever get on a bicycle for that matter, let alone a car. That one uh, was too far. So God, I, this, I began to under, misunder, you know, kind of struggle. Lord, this is not what I signed up for. I thought I signed up for a different life. Um, you know, soon afterwards, uh, the life ministry where I went to work had a, a two-bedroom flat, you know, in Plainsview, a very nice part of town at the time. But when my classmates would hear I'm living in a two-bedroom apartment, you know, of course, everyone else starts where life starts, you know, in a small bed sitter or something. I think, but Tim did not refuse to work, you know, like my friends would say. <laughs> How can he be living in, in the South B, you know, for that matter and so on, and other areas. Anyway, by the Lord's grace, uh, you know, that kind of settled through that, began to work and so on. So I've, I've worked for one employer, uh, well, now is what, 31 years, uh, you know, since 1989. And uh, of course, been very different contexts. I started out working with students, so really spent a lot of time at the University of Nairobi with uh, students. Uh, with the, in the latter years of my, my, my seven years there, I did a bit of work at Kenyatta University, Jomo Kenyatta. We kind of helped to start the ministry there. And then I was asked to join a regional team and uh, do some missionary work from Zimbabwe. So we were also there for seven years with my family. I got married, by the way. Um, 1993, after about four years of work with Life Ministry. My wife, Mary Yokos, also does the same thing, uh, or was working for a similar organization, but different at Kenyatta University, and uh, got married in 93. We have two daughters, who are now young adults, I guess, maybe the ages of some of you or thereabout, <laughs> for those of you who are younger, and so on. They are just finished final years of, of university right now, uh, you know, sixth year and fourth year. And then, um, uh, basically, I was served in Zimbabwe for seven years. Again, I uh, had really opportunity to to help uh, raise leaders, uh, you know, uh, there for Zimbabwe and also some of the Southern African nations, specifically Namibia. I had a lot more responsibilities there, but also some of all, all the others there. It's very easy to travel in Southern Africa. They have very good road networks or used to have good road networks. So you could go around all those countries, but you could go through several countries in one day just, just, just with a good road network. Uh, then came back, I gave leadership to life ministry for four years. I knew that I wanted to do, by the time I got to Zimbabwe, I got to uh, develop an interest in leadership. Uh, I guess part of what the role I was playing and so on. So I began to take some further studies. Did, so my master's is in a different area. I went and moved from engineering to social sciences <laughs> because now I have felt I had found my calling. I knew what I wanted to do. So my master's is in leadership. Then um, when I came back, by the time I came back from Zimbabwe, we felt that we had finished the work there. We had raised, by God's grace, some young people there, locals who could do the work. And we felt at that point we needed to give the space so they can continue to do what we were doing. And uh, by God's grace, within about a year, there were four, the second year, another five. So there were about nine young people who could continue what we had been doing. And uh, suddenly it was yeah, definitely time to, to come back after the seven years. So, um, I, I went and then focused mostly on a PhD as well as uh, doing leadership training. So the last uh, 10 years or so, <laughs> that one took a bit longer. I mainly both worked with LNET, but also was involved with a in an organization called the International Leadership Foundation. Still an outfit of life ministry, but focuses on giving leadership training to leaders in government, in business, um, in academia, different factors, as sectors of society. And uh, so that's a little bit of my story. And then uh, last year is when um, I was approached uh, to consider giving leadership to International Leadership University, which is also sponsored by Life Ministry. So there's a connection there. And at first, I didn't think uh, I was wanted to do that. I've taught there. I had taught there for 10 years. So I knew the school pretty well from outside. <laughs> but I wasn't sure what to do administration. 
but through a number of uh, circumstances, again, I have learned to listen, uh, even though initially my emotions were, I am not sure I want to do that. I knew it was in a pretty challenging situation, like many other universities, very indebted and so on, and other challenges I was aware of organizationally. Uh, but as I prayed, I prayed about that with my wife. I must say she was small, she was already working there. I had been working, has worked over there for almost 10 years. So anyway, I must say that uh, I, I think her prayers were, were, were not very neutral. <laughs> so in a certain direction and so on, and uh, she kept telling me, you know, I think you should come. <laughs> Anyway, so I, but the Lord made it clear yeah, towards the end. And I began to see just, I've uh, been there for six months now, almost coming to up to seven. And uh, definitely I've seen the Lord's hand uh, in what we've been doing. Um, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to give leadership there. And uh, again, in all that I do, um, whether, whether it's with LNET, whether it's with the Leadership uh, Foundation or in the Leadership University, whether it's my years as a staff member with Life Minister working with students, um again i think by god's grace i've been privileged to have people around whom i could impart my life into or in terms of uh, discipleship or mentorship so i think those are the things i would say that uh, i think drive me and i wanted to give you just a little bit of background and then um wanted to start by asking you a question if you don't mind i think having told you a little bit about my life so feel free to unmute if you need to if you'd like to respond and ask you why you would like to do mentor mentoring or why you'd like to learn more about mentoring because I'd like to engage you <clears throat> and direct the rest of our time along the lines of what you'd like to do. Why would you like to be a mentor? Or why have you been a mentor, those of you who have already been mentoring other people? So just from, from your perspective, and there's no wrong answer, it's just what drives you, what, what motivates you to mentor others. Okay, so let's hear from as many of you. <laughs> yes, and somebody says I look like karaoke. I'm looking at the charts too. You can use the chat. Yeah. Hello, Karibu Cecilia. Hi. Yes. Um, my name is Cecilia. Yes. And now, what uh, what made me want to be in the mentorship okay want to mentor people uh -huh. especially the people and the young girls yeah that i didn't get that chance mm -hmm. uh, but when back okay when i look back uh my my younger years i'm mm -hmm. already uh, not that i'm that old but uh, when i <laughs> i look <laughs> when, I, when i look at, uh, during when i was in high school and now the transition to university uh -huh. uh, during in, uh, you know, there's usually so many things that happen, even you don't know what career to choose, what yeah. what to do, uh, there's that confusion. So, and I, I did not have somebody to, to guide me along. And in high school and in primary, I used to perform well. I used mm -hmm. to see, uh, okay, as in, I, I would say I'm performing well, I'm doing well, but there's nobody who was to guide me to mm -hmm. exactly what, what I wanted. And at the same time, that time I was not born again. So I cannot yeah. say that now I... Uh, it's not like now that I can I can pray and purpose that God I want you to show me my purpose. But even if I was not born again, I used I used to write God, what is my purpose? Why was I born? I, what, I used to ask myself why why am I here in this world and all that. So with with time now after I got born again and now I and now you see now you because now you're not guided by somebody else, you waste a lot of time. You waste a lot of even in doing some courses some courses which even are not related to your to your purpose to your calling you waste time even in choosing friends who are not even alongside your purpose yeah. you choose you do so many things you waste uh, let me just say you waste time mm. so because now uh, I, I for now i'm aligning this time now i'm starting to align so many things about myself mm. and i saw uh, and I was thinking, no, if, if me, I wasted that time, I wouldn't want to see another person, another another young person wasting such kind of time. Okay. I, it's that if I, if I give myself and I start aligning them, you start aligning them earlier, they will not waste time like the way I wasted time. Okay. That is oh, uh, uh, one of my motivation <laughs> for partnership. Oh, thank you, Cecilia. Let me guide for the rest of us. Thank you very much uh, for being the bold one to start. Um, the rest of us Maybe as you share, when I teach at university, I encourage students to give me word one, one word answers. One word answer forces you to really think about what's the essence of my communication. <laughs> 
So, you know, uh, maybe how could we have summarized Cecilia's just as an example? One of us tried to want to try that. What did you hear her say? Let me see who was listening. What did she say share with us? No, no wrong answer again. Let's get used to sharing. Uh, Thank you. Let's Hello, uh, Dr. Uh, yes, one word. Uh, the question of purpose. Purpose. Okay, you had purpose, which is good. Uh, what else? Thank you. In social science, fortunately, since now that's why I, I teach and uh, whatever, there's, there's, there are very few wrong answers because it depends on who's looking at the issue. Prudence. Uh, prudence, okay. So you, you want somebody to live a prudent, uh, more disciplined life. That's true. Uh, what else? Direction. Direction. So you want to be able, a guide to the direct other people. You can see. So you can summarize many things. Of course, there's no one word. So you could use maybe one or two or a compound one, like saying giving back. There's also a sense of her feeling, I didn't receive this, but now is my chance to maybe to give others. Thank you. So let's hear from a few others. Let's try to get a few others so that you can get as many people as possible. That's why I'm encouraging the shorter one word answers. Okay. Passing on the skills, thank you. That somebody shares that on, this, on the chat. I'm looking at that. What else? For me, generational uh, obligation. Okay, so you feel it's your time to give back, yeah? Okay, the Evans, thank you for sharing it. So there's a sense of passion within you that God has put to help others. I think uh, I would like to, to help in the journey of transformation. Mm -hmm. um, that is very uh, important for me because I've been transformed through mentorship. Okay, so to help transform others. Thank you, Fred. Go ahead. Fred is uh, mine was really, was really to shorten the learning curve. Okay, uh -huh. so yeah, sometimes it takes us a long time to get where we want to go, but uh, you can shorten that. Thank you. Thank you. Growing others uh, and so on. Then fulfillment also. There's a sense of fulfillment in, in developing others. So all these are different um, motivations that are there. And I think it's good to clarify for yourself, maybe I would say in this journey of mentorship, I think the first, time is, the first thing is to be clear on why you want to do it. you're doing it, it helps and let me encourage us uh, maybe from my reflection that to have a greater purpose than even just an individual so to speak you may be looking right now at helping one individual or a few but look at the bigger purpose what is it that you'd like to ask god for you know in some chapter chapter 2 verse 8 ask god for the nations you know in a sense you are asking god for something really only he can do something big and uh, so I'd like to ask, why do you do mentorship? I would, I would hope that eventually when you think about it and when you frame it well, you'll begin to think about, okay, maybe because I'm a part of the kingdom of God, I want to extend his kingdom uh, because of the nation of Kenya. Some of you may, God may just place a burden and a passion for Kenya. I would like to see change in this nation and I believe it will come through mentorship, raising the right, the right kind of leaders or maybe the church. So look at the bigger purpose uh, for which god has raised you up to be a mentor um and, and therefore though you may only be spending time with a few um you know ultimately they're the bridge to the bigger purpose that god will have you good so second question i'll try to use questions because they hopefully help us interact a bit what have you found to be the most helpful uh, in mentorship so far and then i'll share a few thoughts around that uh, whether practices, principles, again, try to keep it to one word if you can. Principles, practices, uh, approaches. Um, what have you found most helpful in the process of mentorship? Okay, let's get on again a few thoughts. For me, it is the ability to be able to define values and have a mentee follow through those values and that is very very okay important. value transfer yeah. okay value transfer okay that's good what else uh i think one for me is the uh, relationships having relationships okay. that's good relationships yeah that's good friendship relationships uh -huh. what else for me is to see people realize their potential ah, very good so raising others to their fullest potential very very encouraging 
Okay, having a clear plan, karaoke says. Uh -huh. okay. Visionary leadership. Okay, uh, maybe that, explain that a little bit. Uh, I've found that I having a vision for my generation has enabled me to, mm -hmm. to see talent and to able to be able to nurture it, to mm -hmm. sort of develop leaders, uh, even, mm -hmm. even those who may not take themselves to be leaders. Okay, very good, very good. And uh, maybe there's a place there for believing in others, sometimes even those who don't believe in themselves, isn't it? You know, because we come through, we are scarred through life and we have gone through life experiences. So it's just that, that affirmation, seeing people for what they will become, not just what they are. Okay. True. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Evans is writing about uh, growth and transformation. So you plan for growth. You want to monitor the, the growth of others and their transformation. That's good. Well, let me share a few thoughts here. Uh, first, one of the things that I found about mentorship, it's, it's, it's not so much doing. I think that's what comes to mind very often. But actually, that's a secondary thing. Mentorship is about being. Um, so if you want to be a good mentor, then be exactly what you'd like to, you know, others to be, you know, be the change you want to see kind of thing. So if you want to see people who are disciplined, then be disciplined in your own life. If you want to see people who uphold values, then, you know, by the grace of God, grow in that area as well so that uh, you, you, you become what you, you know. Yeah, I think all too often we focus on, on doing and that there is a doing, there is even the skills of doing, which you are going to be learning in this program. But if anything, um, what will help you long term is being. I hope this is a safe example uh, because I say I share it, uh, I trust with a measure of humility. It's difficult to tell whether you're being humble <laughs> and you can't say you are. <laughs> the moment you say maybe you're no longer being. But uh, I've had the privilege by the grace of God to you know, invite a lot of people to serve at, with us at ILU, the university. And quite a lot of them have come um, pro bono you know, without charging us for now because we have not had a very good balance uh, balance sheet in terms of our books. Uh, I found up, you know, in the university, like I told you, I knew was indebted and I didn't know how we would turn it around. And uh, so I remember in uh, in December, I got a thought, you know, when we were having the Christmas break uh, last year, I just joined in November, so I had just had a feel for the place uh, just for about uh, five, three, four weeks. And I, one of the ideas that came is maybe to invite people that I know who are qualified, they have at least a master's degree, you know, which is like the minimum you can use to teach at least in a graduate courses and so on. All that. So I thought, so let me appeal to as many as I know. And there are those, of course, who have now higher degrees and so on. And I told them, would you like to come and teach for ILU for a trimester for free? Uh, in exchange, you'll give you a one-day training <laughs> on how to teach with values, how to transform people, <laughs> you know, with, with biblical values. I mean, by the grace of God, we had about 70 people who responded. We could not even have all of them. So at first, uh, we only had 40. We could only accommodate 40 for the first one. We, we, we hope to invite the others the next time. And so one of them told me, you know, because I was even apologizing and saying, you know, you know, do you, you know, one of them is a very highly placed person. And he said to him, you know, and I say this again, I just to make the point. He said, it's not even so much about the institution. It's about you. I know you and I can trust you. So if when you ask me, I, I, I'm more there and so on. And you can, you had also karaoke say he only asked me the other day, I think two days ago and so on, but I know him and I can trust him. <laughs> so karaoke, this is payback for you, <laughs> you know, and so on. So <clears throat> mentorship is about Thank you. <laughs> it's about character, it's about being. The second one, uh, and I think I even saw someone else mentioned it, I can't remember who it was, uh, like Josiah, is relationship. I think that's the other thing. It is simply being a friend. Look at Jesus with the disciples. I mean, since he is the greatest example, I'm sure you're going to be coming through that session that uh, the only mentorship training as the biggest example of a mentor <clears throat> and a perfect example for that matter. But uh, he just would spend time with the, with the men that he was with. Um, and a few women maybe were on the fringes. But uh, he spent time with these people, ate together, you know, and we almost have this feeling that uh, they spent nights in various places, you know, maybe on the journeys and so on, uh, moving from place to place and so on. So the friendship building, taking time to build into people. And um, it's not easy. 
but that's what you have to do. That's why it's a long-term journey. There is, you know, there's not a quick fix uh, because, of course, relationships take different times and so on to, to grow. So, but uh, but think about it in terms of a, it's a relational journey, it's a friendship building and so on. And ultimately, because that's the only time people will begin to really open up and, um, you know, share the deeper secrets of life, their struggles, because they know you're a friend, you mean well, even, even when it's difficult to do that. Um, maybe I will share one more and then I, I come back to another with another question. The other, uh, Point and I think one of you, I think it's Cecilia or somebody mentioned it from as a as a learning from the time with Mr. Nganga, uh, John Nganga, or is a question of multiplication, a multiplication strategy. Um, there are two ways you can do ministry since uh, partly you are doing this as ministry. Although of course mentorship can also be done as a profession. Many people are doing that, or even as a business. But uh, primarily at the heart of it, I believe it needs to be ministry. Uh, the other things can be layers on top. Um, and there are two ways you can do ministry. One of them is addition, the other one is multiplication. And that just comes from the two words. I'm sure you remember from, you know, when you were in lower primary, you learned addition and multiplication. Addition was, you know, the, the, the numbers just added up, you know, two plus two was, uh, was four, two plus three was five, plus two times three was six, and so on, and it keeps adding up. And uh, just wanted to ask you a question, maybe you may have reflected on this. If you are to mentor, this is, you know, you are a perfect mentor for that matter. And every year you, you mentored three new people, just three. Doesn't sound like an impossible number. So this year you mentor the three people, but you do it so well that at the end of the year, those three can mentor another three. Um, and then the following year you take on another three yourself and then they, they themselves continue. You continue to stay in touch with the old three uh, but they, they, they themselves also continue to, to reach others and to mentor others and to multiply, so to speak. How long will your ministry take, <clears throat> excuse me, to touch the whole world so that everybody in the world, the 7 billion of us under COVID right now, would be under your mentorship? How many years will it take you? Okay, keep that in mind. Let me give you a different illustration. Suppose you are a very powerful speaker. You know, uh, everybody is inviting you everywhere. So you speak 365 days a year. You don't even take a holiday because you are so much in demand. And every audience is about a thousand people. Uh, so 365 times a thousand. So every year you're reaching how many? 365,000, isn't it? That's just maths. 365 times a times a thousand. How many years will it take you to speak to everybody you know and talk share with them your values and uh, in a sense help see them uh, transformed because you're a powerful speaker whose message transforms people how many years will it take you to to, to reach the world so that everybody would have heard you and been transformed by your message can somebody who is good at maths help us that's just dividing 7 billion by 365,000 because that's the number of people you're able to reach every year Anyone who can do the quick maths? 7 billion divided by 365,000. It's 19,178. <laughs> okay, almost 20,000 years, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes. So reaching 1,000 a, a people sounds very impressive when you have those speakers that are in high demand. You know, it's not a bad thing. I'm saying God calls people, of course, to different things, but uh, no one person will ever reach the world in that way. As you can hear, it's 19,000 years or something. None of us is living that long, isn't it? <laughs> you know, so we definitely know that's not God's way to reach the world or to impact the world or transform the world. However, on the other hand, how many years will it take you? As I said, just reaching three people. In the year you, you disciple them, you mentor them, you help develop their character and they in turn can reach other people at the end of the one year. And they in touch reach three and through. So well, let's, let's assume a perfect model. But, you know, of course, you know that in real life, there'll be breakdowns, there'll be a Judas who walks away and so on. But assuming even with Jesus, that happened, the perfect mentor. But suppose there were just three people. How many years will it take you? 
Now that is a, an engineering question because you'd have to do three to the factor of something because this is now not, uh, this is a factorial, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's basically as a multiplication. And I believe if you do the maths, um, haven't looked at this for a while, um, it's somewhere around for three people, is somewhere around 13 years only. With two people, I think it grows up to about 32 years or something like that. So, so long as it's more than one, <laughs> which means multiplication has to be more than one, it is feasible in your lifetime to impact everybody in the world with the values that you have. Of course, life doesn't work that way. That's how come maybe none of us has managed to do it. But you can see that that's why the Great Commission would be a, a, a feasible commission. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. That is only possible if you're going to use a multiplication method. So I would hope that as you set yourself up to do, to do um, mentorship, then commit to multiplying yourself. That's, I guess, the same thing Ms. Anganga told you. And the scriptures give us a good guidance on that. Second Timothy 2 verse 2, among other scriptures, yeah, others. But uh, what, do, what does that verse say? I'm sure that one you maybe have reviewed. What does Second Timothy 2, 2 say? The things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, these entrust to who? To faith people or uh, people who are able, I think other translations say, no, sorry, faithful people or reliable people, other translations say, who will be able to teach others also. So how many generations are there, right there? Somebody talked about generational uh, mentorship. So there's Paul, this is Paul talking to Timothy. So Paul is already mentoring Timothy. And he says, the things that you've heard me say in the presence of witnesses, so there were other people around Timothy, he wasn't alone. Now don't even try to mentor one alone. It's a good principle to have a small group. Um, like Karaoke mentioned about the group we used to have at the university. And uh, so, um, and you know, the things that you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, is in trust to faithful people who, uh, sorry, the, now he's being told Timothy to the faithful men or to the faithful people next to now, the next generation. That's now the third generation who will in turn not hold on the truth to themselves or the good principles and values, but who will in turn also do what? Who will be able to teach others also the fourth generation right there. But there's a key there, you know, choose carefully who you spend time with. It's because as you know, you're going to be sure that the results happen. So a lot, some, some of the reason why mentorship does not work is that we don't quite follow the God's principles. Jesus also selected, do you remember he spent the whole night in prayer? before choosing the 12? You must choose carefully because that you, you only have, you know, that are going to ensure whether that multiplication happens or does not happen. So the things you've heard from me, Paul says in 2 Timothy 2, 2, and trust to faithful men, in the presence of many witnesses, this is Timothy now, and trust to faithful men, the third generation, who will be able to teach others also. And of course, this is implied that that continues generation after generation. So be purposeful. If you do it right, you know, the impact of your life will be something you cannot even tell because this is just, a, you know, it's a matter of time, so to speak, and faithfully doing it. Well, I hope I have started something maybe so far that someone of you may want to ask. So again, whether on the chat or just in person, anybody who has a comment, a question, uh, the question of faithful people, multiplication. And then we talked about uh, mentorship is, you know, has to have a bigger purpose than yourself. We also talked about the fact that mentorship is to do with relationships. Anybody who'd like to intervene, a question, a comment, keep it brief. Yeah, um, I'd like to comment about um, the scripture you shared, Second Timothy 2 2. It's very, um, I don't know how to put it, but just seeing that there are four generations that are being touched by one one that just generated, or rather, mm -hmm. yeah, generated or started with one person. Mm -hmm. It's actually, oh my goodness, it's quite transformational. Let me just use that word again. And, and, um, I believe this is 
see what God wants us to do in order to change the world, in order to transform mm-hmm. the people with the light of his word. Yeah. So this, this, you, um, the carry bringing this scripture and bringing this highlight to us again is uh, not, not, not just encouraging, but it becomes an anchor yeah. in, our, in our day-to-day mentoring. Mm. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Rose. Let me pick on a few people. I know a number of people here. Uh, Angela, do you have any reflection? Or uh, Deborah, thank you for the chat. Okay, so Deb is uh, commenting on the fact that uh, the multiplication factor, and of course, seeing it again in the biblical perspective. Um, and you see that in the life of Paul, in the life of Jesus and others. Uh, in terms of that generational impact. Um, And spending time again with a few, Jesus who was a perfect mentor, only had 12. He had, of course, others, the 72, a bit broader, and uh, elsewhere it talks about other hundreds, but uh, he spent time with not only, among the 12, he had the favorite three, so to speak. So you can see the three again, now Peter, James, and John for him, were the ones that he spent most of the time with. And eventually when you look at after he left, they became the leaders of the church. The other, we don't hear a lot as much about the other nine, you know, although of course they had their faith journey, but the three became the real, real strong pillars. So there's something about that that maybe we, should, we can all learn. Okay, and uh, Cecilia, yes, it is true, Mario, that uh, it will take a short time to reach the world. So why don't we do it? Because it's not glamorous. You know, uh, if one of you told you, oh, I have a thousand people for you to go and speak to, or I have three people for you to go and spend time with. What would we opt for? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Most of us would opt to be to go and speak to the one thousand, isn't it? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's where the publicity is, and you know, and the world has the world numbers. But in terms of long term, I'm not saying there is anything wrong. I speak to crowds as well, but uh, you know. Um, the, the power of this is really when you spend time with a few people, but with a, again, with a, in, in the context of a bigger purpose. So keep in mind that don't just stay against more. You are always envisioning them, encouraging them to go and take on the world and take on the nations and so on. Yeah. And then choosing prayer, prayerfully. Yeah, thank you, Angela, for mentioning that. It's really important. Jesus shows us that example. Okay. All right. Um, one more, uh, maybe two more thoughts, and then I'll, I'll open it up for final discussion. The hour is going away very quickly. Is that choose people for their potential, not for who they are presently. Um, <clears throat> now, Karaoke told you when I met him, he was a student leader. Now, I, I, and uh, you know, he had just run against Babu Owino uh, at the university. I thought there must be something good in this guy, this guy who can do crazy things <laughs> like running against his babu. <laughs> you know, there must be something in him that, uh, you know, he likes to do, you know, take on challenging tasks and so on. So I got really drawn to him because of that, you know, because again, I could tell that maybe if that energy and focus were directed to Christ, um, he could go far. And uh, Jesus is the same, you know, I think, think of people like Peter. We all know Peter for being rushed to speak and so on, but Jesus knew this guy had something, or Paul for that matter. He was a persecutor of Christians. But of course, God being God, you no, know, could see what he can do. And that energy, when it was turned the right way, you know, these people did great things for God. So people, you know, when you're kind of about to retire, you go into these big offices and so on. So I think I was hardly 30 and um, and I was in, in the regional office. I was a regional director, you know, and uh, many people complained. This boy is not, uh, he's not a Hajaiva. <laughs> and so on, you know, in fact, uh, I had had some, made some mistakes in the past, you know. So I remember the, my leader, you know, some of you have met Bella Adadebo. He was the one who was my man, you know, who was kind of the regional director. Uh, and, he, you know, he had somehow picked me out for much earlier. So he, he asked me, you know, so, so the, when the people actually, the delegation went to him to complain when he announced that he was intended to recruit me to be part of the regional office. I had just led the ministry in Kenya for you know, the campus ministry for sort of four years. And then he was now asking me to oversee all the ministries in about 20 some countries. 
uh, in terms of campus ministry. So, so the people say, you know, when the people went to complain, he said, okay, let's agree on two things. Uh, first of all, let's agree team has some weaknesses that need to be dealt with. They said, yes, 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 uh, we thought you didn't know. And uh, he said, I know. But let's also agree on the second one. Team has potential. That's when I was difficult. They said, ah, okay, if you say so. <laughs> you know, people tend to see the, 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 poor, the weaker side of you <laughs> rather than the potential. So he said, well, I am seeing the potential. And so I'm bringing him close to work with me so that, um, you know, I can help him deal with the rough edges and we can all benefit from his potential. I mean, I didn't get to know that until many, many years later. Actually, he's not even the one who told me. <laughs> it's someone else who, who was, you know, involved in that process, who owned up that uh, he didn't see at first the potential, he saw the weaknesses, but uh, it's important to see people for what they can become. Jesus did, works with broken people, with people who have weaknesses, but whose hearts are in the right place and they have some something in that, the, you know, in terms of potential. It, that's why it needs prayer because the human side is to see the weaknesses, isn't it? And uh, only God can see the people's potential. That's why we need to ask God whom he is raising to work with us. Okay. I'm sure that one must have stirred some interest. Let's hear whether there is anybody with a comment on this whole idea of choosing people for their potential, for who they can become and not necessarily who they are uh, presently. Anyone who would like to add a mega comment uh, and so on? Yeah, Tim, I think that you shared that. Um, um, my 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 mind went to to the anointing of King David, mm -hmm. and and the fact that um, his father and brought brought um, you know the other brothers who were who were masculine, they were all older than than him, and everyone thought that okay, these are the ones. Mm -hmm. His father couldn't even remember that he has another um, son simply mm -hmm. because he was out there rearing um, a sheep. That's true. And, and um, as you bring out this aspect of um, mm -hmm. us not being physical, you know, mm -hmm. it means that as we endeavor to to mentor, mm -hmm. we have actually to resolve that we are being, we, we, we will be led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Because if we allow ourselves to be led by our physical circumstances, like looking um, at what is so attractive in somebody, then we could leave out so many people mm. who, who God would rather be saying, these are the ones. Mm. So it is, it is important that we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, mm -hmm. because then he knows it all. So, once again, thank you for sharing that. Very, very important. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is a good question, though, from Cecilia. Thank you for posting a good question in the chat. What if their potential is not realized for a long time or they lack the discipline to work towards their potential? Very real. Um, that's the real world. What would you do if you had people like that? Yes, you'd like to mentor them or help them, but they just do not pick, seem to pick up their pieces together and so on. Well, so in the first place, it helps to be able to make it clear. And uh, now, uh, give, let me give you an example. Um, you know, when I got involved with karaoke and others, I was actually, um, you know, I was resident in a busy role and so on. They had to be very flexible because I was doing a traveling job at the time. We could not even fix a, re a regular time and say we'll be meeting on Mondays at this time because different weeks have been different parts of the world. So they had to be flexible. Uh, that was, of course, a test of their flexibility. But I remember the first person that I met, uh, who is a friend of his, um, you know, when I met uh, <clears throat> Henry, actually what happened is that I went to speak at the university. Um, and I remember that particular day I had come from a trip overseas. I was a bit tired, but uh, Mr. Nganga, we happened to have worked together for a long time, asked me whether I could step in for him. I think something had, had come up. And so he just called me and said, hey, can you step in for me? Something has come up and I cannot honor really this commitment. And uh, so I said, okay, I'm a bit tired, but I'll do it. When I went, <laughs> um, it took a long time. This is uh, the old culture at the university. Some of you have been there at the, the, the Christian Fellowship. 
So the, the brothers, and I had been told it would start at six. So I was there just a few minutes to six. Uh, the brothers came at 6.30. It was a brother's fellowship. Then, uh, you know, they insisted on having a half an hour of worship before we can start. So around a few minutes to seven, I told them, I'm leaving at seven. If you will not start, uh, give me the platform to do what I need to do. <laughs> you know, because uh, they were, of course, not appreciating that uh, here I am. I'm very tired. I've just actually flown into the country that day. And I wanted to do that. Then I would, actually, that evening, my wife was also traveling in from somewhere. So I was actually going to be pick, picking her. So, and, uh, but anyway, cut a long story short. When I spoke, you know, the Henry, who is Karaoke's friend, followed me up. I spoke just briefly, I didn't, you know, and again, I just thought it was like any other, you know. Um, I basically uh, finished and, uh, you know, the, my time and I went away. Um, Henry pursued me. He looked for my contact because I never let, gave it to him. So that was already showing some potential. He's, the person is willing to, to reach out, to do something unusual. So he asked, he asked me whether I could be his mentor. And I told him something I normally do on as a standard thing. I told him, well, I'm willing to mentor you if you can find another 10 of your friends. Uh, what was I looking there for, there for? I was looking for some potential to recruit. You know, uh, he may not necessarily even choose the best people, but at least the fact that he's willing and daring, willing to trust God, willing to, to stretch his faith. So he said, okay, I'll do it. Uh, so I gave him a few days. I told him, call me up again when you have 10 people. So I knew it was, of course, a very difficult task. Um, but he called me when he had, I think, four or five. He said, I've not gotten to 10, but would you accept five to start with and I'll keep recruiting more? What would you do if it, it was you? This is, a, this, this is good soil, isn't it? The Bible talks about you know, planting in good soil. <laughs> this is, you know, he, he is, he's also willing to dare to negotiate. You know, he's younger than me, but uh, he's, stay, you know, he's, he's, he's trying his luck, so to speak. So, I mean, this was excellent. You know? And uh, so Henry, uh, by the grace of God, Henry today is uh, working with a, another ministry, Trinity Fellowship. And here is karaoke serving with Elnet, uh, some of the others you know, kind of, uh, you know, did not quite pursue this as, as long and so on. But out of that group came, you know, these two leaders who are serving God in their places. Uh, Josiah, you remember that meeting? I was pretty tough with you guys. <laughs> because, uh, because uh, you know, I knew I had a limited time to do what needed to be done, but I'm, I'm, gr I'm grateful that I, I did get to come, you know, and so on. So I'm just sorry to talk about one of the ways is, of course, give these people, and Jesus did that, by the way. You remember he sent them in twos and so on. He gave them certain assignments to do. He would give them difficult things to say, like feed the 5,000. You know, he knew what to do. Of course, he was a son of God. But all of these were opportunities to see what are these people made of? You know, do they back under pressure? Are they willing to commit themselves? And of course, he tells us ultimately to carry the cross and so on. So, yes, there may be a few people who will fall on the wayside. So, technically, although I talked about working with three, I just wanted to give us a model. I think it's okay to start. I think Jesus gives us a maximum maybe as 12 for any human being, possibly, in terms of people that you are actively mentoring at, you know, in a deep level, in a deep way at a given time. So start out with many because some will fall on the wayside. And then, of course, eventually God somehow brings out the cream on top and so on. So start with a number of them and keep raising the bar, uh, Cecilia. Don't, don't be afraid to challenge them. And then, uh, and so that's why Jesus had many, by the way, he had been talking to many people before. But of course, uh, you know, he spent time praying, of course, for the 12. And he still had another 72 around the 12. And even among the 12, he had the three. So spend time with many, but uh, invest your life in a few, those that you really feel now are the people who are worth your time and so on. Because you have a purpose as well. God will ask you what you did about the vision and the calling he placed on your life and so on. I know our time is kind of up the hour. I hope that you have learned something useful. Let me close with one last thought and then I'll open it up. I, I'm happy to stay for a little longer if those of you who are not in a hurry, but I'd like us to close on time is a good practice. So that uh, if it's six, six o'clock, I'm not sure whether karaoke is it uh, six o'clock. You can just confirm. Okay, let me, I cannot, yeah. It's four minutes past six. Yeah. Okay, so I will just have, uh, close here and then uh, those who'd like to stay on a bit are uh, free to maybe interact for a few minutes. I'm happy to do so or in any other way, but uh, you know, it's good to close formally because that was the time. So just a quick thought. 
And this is what I wanted to close with. Um, one of the, my area of... Uh, I think we can take a few more minutes. Okay, no problem. Thank you. One of the things that uh, when I was trying to do my research for my final work uh, in my doctoral studies, I came across a concept that I thought has, has really helped me. And um, it is, it is a story, uh, what they did is that there was a, a research done around the leaders who did not finish well. And now there's a technical term called derailment, you know, like the way when a train is on a, on a railway line and then it gets off the, ra the track, you say it has derailed, you know, you, you may have heard of that term. So when they checked leaders who are derailed, uh, who did not finish well, they set out well, they seem to have potential, but they never finished well. One of the common factors among all of them was that they found, this was among CEOs, I think, or people like that who didn't finish well. One of the common factors is that they found that they, none of them was mentoring anybody. All of them were not mentoring a person, another person. You know, mentorship has a way of paying back for you. If you are really working with God and you're an honest, an honest person, I cannot be spending time with other people, maybe younger men for that matter, or whoever else I have around me telling them about living right, uh, you know, have, have integrity in your relationships or in the way you use money or, you know, be careful about maybe excesses of alcohol and things like that. And if I, I'm not, and I'm not living it myself, you know, I would have, of course, you have to be a hypocrite to do that. So mentorship has a payback effect on you. In a sense, it is for your own good that you mentor. <laughs> More than the fact that you bless the world with good leaders and, you know, people who are transformed, all those are nice. But the biggest beneficiary of mentorship is yourself. You know, that's a biblical principle, isn't it? What you give comes back to you, so to, so to speak, isn't it? Press down, you know, shaken together and running over. That's what God does as you give to others. So even though, I mean, it's been a joy to mentor many people by the, the grace of God, you know, in my, especially in my 31 years of ministry, but even at the time when I was a student on campus, um, you know, since about 1985 is when I really uh, kind of understood this concept. I've been, in many ways, I feel I've been the biggest beneficiary, you know, because it is for your own good. So in a sense to say, mentorship is non-negotiable for anybody who wants to finish well. I hope you can keep that in mind. Mentorship is non-negotiable if you want to finish well. Amen? Let me stop here and uh, invite maybe any last remarks uh, as we wrap up. Um, uh, hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so um, for me, I, I think uh, I'm really fascinated by, by the sharing. Thanks for your experience that you've shared with us. But just a quick comment. I, I mean, it's something that has been troubling my heart for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. It's about the issue of um, uh, the contemporary uh, moral issues that we are facing in and around the country, and our, mm -hmm. especially the whole world, uh, issues to do with uh, the moral decay in terms of even uh, same-sex same -sex marriage, the LGBTQIT agenda that is being mm -hmm. propagated. Mm -hmm. And I think to an extent, like we owe ourselves uh, and even the generations to come mm -hmm. a great deal of values that we, we were passed on to. Because mm -hmm. I, I think in parenting, so that's something that has not been really taken into consideration. Now we are having young uh, children just being exposed to sexually, uh, sexually uh, the content which is mm -hmm. really distorting their minds and their views. But I think it's upon us to really pass on the baton as far as mm -hmm. the Christian worldview mm -hmm. is concerned to the world. And I, it's important we talk about these things even in the church. That's good. That's good. And John, I think you have a, you know, there's a partly a passion there that the Lord has put. So find some faithful sure. people that you can mentor, you can pour yourself into. Do it strategically. Yeah. Do it, of course, uh, challenge them to go bigger and further, to invest themselves in, you know, and so on. And, uh, and so on. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay, let's hear from one of a few others. But now you're, you're on your time. So, Eric, whenever you want us to pray so that those who must leave, then uh, they don't feel guilty. Well, that's something we do in Africa. 
So you can always do that and people are free to stay, those who want to hear more. But hey, that's Jesus' strategy for helping people. He would preach something and talk in parables, and then those who really wanted to hear more, he would, they would come and see him again, isn't it? I say, Master, what are you explaining out there in parables? It's another way of telling the people who are faithful, isn't it, who want to hear more? Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Uh, mm -hmm. I had actually requested people for more time today. Okay. There is something that we need to discuss at the end in oh, terms yeah. of the next, next steps. Okay. However, I also want to comment that uh, last point that uh, to finish well, you need to to mentor. Like mentoring is a non-negotiable. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it has never come to me that way. I, maybe I think it is something that. I can mm -hmm. opt to do maybe when uh, maybe when I have the time or when it is convenient. Mm -hmm. But that emphasis that I have to it, I think that that speaks to me. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome. And just uh, the thought, I mean, it's a, it's just a principle of nature. Think about it. Even for a tree or an animal and something, the moment uh, you stop growing, the moment you stop multiplying, you actually die. So it's just there's something in you that dies when you're no longer, you know, multiplying, no longer growing, no longer learning. That's why I also began with that point that mentorship is about character. Well, let me let me close uh, with a second closing. This is like a preacher now, right? but I think this will be good for you. Um, mentorship Hello. also. Okay, Cecilia, you have a comment, and thank you, Petronila, for your kind comment. You do, of course, you are. A very experienced hand at this. Thank you for being here. Cecilia, you wanted to say something? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much. I want to appreciate you for <coughs> coming to, to speak to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, now you, uh, you've you been, been a leader and being in a position like uh, where you are, it's an, uh, an academic position, I would say uh, uh, an academic place or education mm -hmm. in the seven months influence in the education department, in the education part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, could 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 there be a, a place where by now because that now Christians we are we are raising us uh, we are raising to take ourselves to we are raising to take those uh, as in those positions and mm -hmm. influence them now in the area of education mm -hmm. can we have policies that uh, uh, inculcate the in the curriculum and uh, in the curriculum for for them to have mentorship and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as in to of the uh, curriculum because mm -hmm. it's it, it, Right now, we see so many things are failing, and the way my brother who has talked there, I think John, talking about the way parenting has failed and all that, and it's going mm -hmm. to, to uh, I'm not a, a really, uh, I'm, I, okay, it's going to affect so many things. Why, why don't we start like in mentorship, as in people to grow uh, from education system? It's inculcated in us as we as we move uh, as we continue the ladder instead of mm -hmm. meeting it at the end at the end at the end place. Now you've been like we have policies that. Uh, uh, that are uh, policies that are there in our curriculum to to have like mentorship places like a curriculum or, or to be inculcated there okay. like to be one yeah. of the topics thank you um <clears throat> thank you very much um it, it's that's that, that that's important um however you know it, it's very difficult to legislate values <laughs> although they, they can be passed on but at the same time um uh, by God's grace, we've been able to make some contribution. When, um, you know, one of the things that the Elnet Group on Governance did, uh, you know, and of course it's, it's kind of the same organization, was to help make a contribution towards the Vision 2030 values, uh, the values that are in the Vision 2030, like that whole concept, and and it was a quite a lot of struggle with the people in government to encourage them that, because they could not see the role of values. They were thinking what we need in Kenya is an economy and infrastructure and so on. So we kept saying, no, no, there's a soft part, there's the values. And, you know, Mo Kebati, of course, I, I think he would have not mind me saying that because at first he struggled with it. At that time, he was a leader of Vision 2030. And he was saying, these things are even feeling very religious and so on. And of course, the values, yes, because our source was the Bible. But uh, I mean, I've heard him in the later years just saying how that, that was the most important aspect about Vision 2030 and so on. So the other day, there was a meeting of vice chancellors, and um, they were to present it to us about uh, see the CBC curriculum, because of course, a number of years, those students are going to be in the university. 
And when they talked about the vision of the CBC curriculum, the one that now is, is being play, rolled out in primary school, they said it is to make young, help young people to be young people or who are ethical and who are responsible. I can't remember all the other things, but I remember those two. And they talked about how they drew those that particular vision from the values in version 2030. I mean, when we did those values years ago, I would never have known that God would use these values to impact another generation. So yes, I mean, wherever you are, I know Cecilia, not just maybe in a position of responsibility by way of having a title, if, you know, just wherever you are, do something because you never know how you're going to impact the generations to come. And certainly is yes, maybe to whom more is, much is given, more is required, but all of us are called to always be looking out for ways we can be able to, to, to make an imprint uh, for, for the long term. Yeah. Well, Karuki, I think I've taken very long. Maybe you'll invite me another day to share my other story. Uh, let me not uh, you know, go beyond the time because I know you have some other agenda for, for this afternoon, but uh, for this evening. But thank you very much, uh, brothers and sisters. Allow that we pray. Um, it's nice to see all of you and your commitment to be here. Thank you for your commitment to, to do this for the Lord and, uh, and for this nation. Uh, is it okay if I pray? All right, let, let yes. me pray. Yes, okay, yes. Thank you. Sorry, it's very kind. Please, please. <laughs> thank you, Josiah. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for each of these friends. They are here because they want to follow you into the journey on mentorship. And I know that as I've experienced in my own life, it is not only going to benefit many others, they, they, they themselves are going to be the better for it. Uh, because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a walk, it's an invitation to a walk with you, Jesus, to know you better and out of the us to have the living water that would go out to bless the lives of others. So we do help each one of them to commit to walk with you first, to become men and women of integrity, of character, but also to learn the skills that uh, they'll be learning over the next few weeks, um, you know, in this journey, uh, so that they can be able to impact many others. Would you expand their boundaries and expand their vision for how you want to use them? That it is not just even just about the question of a few people around them. It is to impact, like uh, Cecilia said, the mountains of society, the sector of society that you've called them to, that they will be able to bring influence by the grace of God. Some of it may not be visible immediately, but surely in the years to come, we believe that that will be realized and have great impact for you. Thank you. Pray that you bless the rest of the meeting now and thank you for this opportunity and privilege for me to spend this time with them. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Very much. A vote of thanks. Okay, Deborah. that's okay. Sure, let her do that. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Doctor, you thank you so much for. I mean, this was very impactful. If I could just maybe just sum up what you said from my from what you said for me, I think a few things I've held I've held dear to me is that you chose your purpose through the years. And the years are filled with layers of experience and powerful transformation in people. And another thing that you've also brought out is how to hold the vision and trust the process with God. Um, spend your life protecting the long, longevity of your character. Um, spend your time with many, but invest in the true career potential. Mm -hmm. And mentorship is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. As well as also, mentoring is a multiplication method. Mm -hmm very insightful um i wish we had more time we should have made this two hours <laughs> <laughs> no that's okay it, it means we'll have some more time in the future <laughs> amen amen yeah, yeah. And thank you that sorry for this we we're also grateful even as you can see the comments in the group everyone is so appreciative of this okay. everything is so up has grown up and um so a good thank you to you dr Tari, and everyone who is here thank you everyone for being here um, for this process that we're on, this journey that we're on, all of us together to become mentors mm. and to transform our country. I would also like to thank Jim and um, and Evans and also Timothy, mm. uh, Tony, sorry, and Tony also. 
So over to you, James. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. We can release you, but you can also stay on. <laughs> uh, I'll be happy to take the first option. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank yeah, you. the Lord, Lord bless you too, and uh, all the best, uh, everyone. Asante. Thank you. Okay, thanks.